Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.D. Warski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in the third video tutorial on this 10-part video tutorial series on object-oriented PHP programming, I want to introduce you to the concept of inheritance. Um, this is something that's going to be fundamental to object-oriented programming, and it can be a little bit complex. So we're going to try to break it down and make it uh, a little bit simpler, uh, going through step-by-step, step, and we'll take a look at the idea of pets and then cats and dogs and how really a dog is a type of pet and a cat is a type of pet. But before we do that, you'll notice that I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com. Here you can visit my website and purchase video tutorial series, but also view any video tutorial series uh, that I've created. Um, greatly appreciate all the support thus far. And if you'd like to purchase a video tutorial series, they're only $20. The more you buy, the more you save. Alternatively, if you can't afford that, but you want to give back, please just leave this video a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube or both are greatly appreciated. And I really appreciate all the feedback that I've received thus far. So that said, why don't we go over to localhost OOP tutorial three slash pet underscore object. What I've done very similar to all the other video tutorials in this series is I've gone ahead, copied over from previously and I've renamed some things. So first, what we'll take a look at is pet object. So this is an HTML page, just like others in the video tutorial series. And you'll see I've gone ahead, just created a title uh, being pet. And then I'm requiring three different, um, different PHP files here. I've got pet, I've got cat, I've got dog. Um, and then I've gone ahead and I've instantiated each one of those. So I've got a pet, I've got a cat, I've got a dog. And you'll see that I'm passing in a string. And actually, this is getting ahead of ourselves here. So I'm just going to do that guy. I think if we reload, we should be still be good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, uh, you'll see that I've got some methods down here and I'm, I'm referring to these as inherited methods. And then I've got custom methods down here and then I'm unsetting the objects. Um, so with all that said, why don't we go ahead and take a look at what's going on. So we'll start with pet. Essentially with inheritance, uh, what it allows you to do is have classes and objects that um, inherit behavior functionality from parent classes. So the idea is you take your topmost abstract idea and then you develop down from there. So what we've done is the idea of pets. Um, you can have a pet and a pet can be either a dog or a cat. And so as a result, pet is going to be our first class, it's our topmost class, and it's going to have a name. So each pet has its own its own name. And you'll see here we've got a constructor. So when we create a pet, we pass in a name and then we actually set that name. And then the pet object has two different methods. It can eat and it can sleep. And all of those methods are going to do is just print that. This is uh, this name is eating. This name is sleeping. And so that's it. That's the pet class. And you'll see now with dog, what we do is we use this special syntax uh, and it's referred to as extends. And so we have class dog extends pet. And so as a result, I should comment these out as well because we're not going to use them. Um, the dog gets the same behavior as the pet. It essentially extends the functionality. So anything that's available in the pet is going to be available in the dog. And so we'll take a look at how this actually plays out. Um, and I'll actually show you cat as well, just so you have an understanding. So here you'll notice that uh, dog actually has its own function called fetch and cat has its own function called climb. So what you can do is you can extend and then add to. Uh, there's a couple other options that we'll talk about in later tutorials like overriding um, uh, and overriding. So yeah, so now what we can do is we can go reload the page and you'll see that I've got Smithers is eating, Bailey is eating, Susie's eating, Smithers is sleeping, Bailey's sleeping, Susie's sleeping. And I've done that. You'll notice that in cat, I don't have sleeping and I don't have eating. And in dog, I don't have uh, eating or I don't have sleeping. They're both available only in the pet class. And so as a result, I can call that method on both types of objects, uh, a cat object and a dog mat object. And I still have the method available to me. Now, the other thing that we added was the, the fetch method to a dog and the climb method to a cat. So let's go ahead and Oops, I want to keep that and take a look at how those play out. And we'll see if you can guess the functionality of what will happen when I actually reload this page, taking a note that the name was private. Hopefully you would have guessed. You'll see that I've got an undefined property here, dog name, cat name. 
Now you might be wondering what gives because the pet has the name and the dog is inheriting from the name. And if you remember in the tutorial two, we talked about private. There was also this scope protected, which we did not talk about. So what's happening here is while cat extends from pet, we're trying to access this name here. And name is actually a property of pet. And we said in the pet class that only the pet class can access the name variable. Uh, or parameter rather. So as a result here, when we call fetch, we're trying to access this private uh, parameter of pet, not actually of dog. And so as a result, we get a PHP error saying, you know, we can't access that. We don't have that property in that object. So there's two different ways that you can get around this. The first, which you might have guessed, would be getters and setters. And so here we wouldn't call this name, we would call this get name. And then in pet, we would have to create get name and set name. Uh, maybe not set name, but you'd have to call get name, create get name. The alternative is in pet, when you're creating your own classes, you can what's called, you can create what's called a protected parameter. And protected means that this class has access to it, but also any child of this class will have access to this. But publicly, you can't access it. So here, if I reload my page, you'll see now I see Bailey is fetching and Susie is fetching. And if I try to... Uh, let's just go in here and we'll say print dog name. And if we reload this, you'll see again, we can't access that protected property. We're not allowed to because we're trying to do it outside of the class. And so that's where this third scope comes in, protected. So that gives you the opportunity for a parent to access a property as well as children. Uh, object oriented lingo there for you. So. Um, just to recap, you could have done uh, getters and setters or this protected. And so hopefully if you have access to, if you're working with classes that pre-exist and you have private uh, functionality, if you need to get to it, you can look for a getter or setter. Or if you're creating your own classes, uh, you'll want to consider whether or not something should be protected. Um, but I would say in this case, what I would recommend you do is keep this as private and do getters and setter uh, methods uh, so that dogs can have that. But I just wanted to show you the idea of protected there. Now, uh, the last thing that I wanna cover off in this tutorial is the idea of constructors through inheritance. So uh, you'll note here that we've got this function pet and it takes a name. And so when I actually instantiate a dog, I do the same thing, I give it, um, I give it Bailey. And as a result, this constructor ends up getting called. And that's because dog doesn't have a constructor and cat doesn't have a constructor. But what happens if I added a constructor? So let's go ahead and, oops, I guess I could have taken those all out one time. Um, let's just go ahead and we'll comment these lines out. So now dog has a constructor and it takes has tail. And so, um, you'll see that it, this is just its own constructor, right? It doesn't reference anything else. It's just got its own. So if I reload this page, you'll see that as a result, we don't set a name. And so the protected name is actually blank. We instantiate a, a blank name. And as a result, when we call and we construct, we can see now blank is eating, blank is sleeping. And that's because the dog overrode the constructor and the parent constructor did not get called. PHP will call the last um, constructor in the hierarchy of parents and children. So we can see how this can change some functionality. Let's go ahead and add a, a print statement to see when dog constructor is called. And um, we're going to pass in has tail, right? So what did I do down here? So we want new dog. And so we're passing in Bailey. Let's just pass in true um, because we're going to take whether or not the dog has a tail. And so we can reload this. And you'll see we still get blank, blank. Um, and if we call our function has tail, let's go ahead and take a look here. And you know what, we'll, we'll default this to the false, right? So now we have, uh, there we go. And we'll take this guy out but we will call dog, I don't know, what was it, as tail. And let's just print this. 
Let's see what happens here. We'll see we're getting one, right? So the constructor is being called because we can see it up here, dog constructor called. And we can see that we've actually set uh, from false to true. So we know that the dog constructor is being called, it's setting its tail uh, and whatnot. But that might lead you to the question, what happens if we want to do both? What happens if we want the dog to do something, but we also want the, the pet object to be called? So we want to set a name. And you can easily do that. What we're going to do here is we're going to add name back in here. And you get to your parent object with the keyword parent. And so that's going to refer to the object up in your hierarchy. And what we can do is uh, you use two colons, and then we're going to call underscore construct. Right? and we'll pass in the name. And so this is where the magic method construct comes in. So we're calling the constructor on the parent and we're passing in the name. And so in pet, let's go ahead and we'll print the parent constructors called. And I just wanna, I wanna comment out the cats because it's gonna get a little bit confusing here. So let's comment out everything but our dog. And we'll keep has tail, right? Okay, so now let's reload this and you'll see the pet constructor got called. And that's because if we look at our code, we went ahead and we called the pet constructor first. So it would step up into here, set the name, tell us pet constructor has been called. And then it would go ahead and set has tail and it would return, it would print out to us dog constructors called. And so that's exactly what we see. We see pet constructor called, dog constructor called, and then we see Bailey's eating, Bailey is sleeping. Bailey is fetching. And then we see lastly that Bailey has a tail. <sighs> so um, that's pretty much it for this uh, video tutorial. What I wanted you to take away from here is the idea of a protected scope so that you can, uh, from your children, can access up. The idea of inheritance so we can extend uh, a pet so that we have a dog. And with that, we can add some functionality to pet. And then Lastly, this idea of constructors and who gets called when. Now you have an idea of uh, instantiating a child, knowing that its constructor will be called, and then you can get to the parent constructor via the parent colon colon underscore underscore construct call. And uh, truthfully, I'm not even sure what happens here. I guess we wouldn't want to, yeah. I don't know if you can, I doubt it, but let's, let's just call this. Let's call pet and see what happens. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Or it looks like it does. It looks like it's the exact same thing. So, so you can call the underscore underscore construct, or you can call the actual uh, function name, the constructor name, which is which is pet, and um, both will work. So that's kind of cool. I didn't actually, I didn't know that. Um, so, anyways, hopefully this video tutorial helped you. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know if you'd like to see something coming up in the video tutorial series, uh, or whether or not this all made sense to you. And as always, if it did help out, please give it a thumbs up. And hopefully, we'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.